All right, what's going on, my friends? This is Azagal, Torgon, Ethelion, however you may know me over the course of now we're going into five season five of Lord of the Rings Rise to War. I'm doing a quick follow up video to my previous video just to go through a couple of other thoughts I've had about the commanders that I'm going to be deploying this season. Uh, I'm going to kind of walk around. I want to talk about the commanders in terms of like their importance, like my who's my top commander going to be. And as you can see, I'm scrolling all the way down here. First, we're going to talk about Gandalf. And I wanted to expand a little bit more on why I decided to put a, a high focus damage mitigation chest piece on him instead of the scale mail with the defense. And it also lends a lot, uh, a little bit more might. So I think the scale mail between, I can just look at it if you're like this. Yeah, so between the trait, Gallant, which gives 18 might, and the base stat 18, it's 36 might on this piece. So the quilted armor, I'm losing only six might, and I'm gaining 60% focus damage reduction. Uh, I'm losing six focus for 60% focus damage reduction i'm losing 15 defense but i'm gaining 18 commander speed so gandalf will go earlier in the battle and he'll move a little bit more quickly on the map which is um important for when you're playing erebor because they're slow <laughs> i believe the commander speed will affect the speed in which the army marches I'll have to double check that I'm like 99 percent sure uh let's just look at it Doop, there it is army march speed six percent so it gives a little bit extra um but the focus damage is important because for two reasons one if i'm fighting dark side i'm really only trying to use gandalf to counter uh witch kings and witch kings put out a lot of focus damage so um it'll mitigate that more so i'll take less losses and dominate witch kings um even more in terms of like you know me destroying them because when i hit witch kings unless they're something ridiculous i usually make them look really bad um so that's really the reason why but uh that's from a fighting dark side perspective fighting light side perspective um good light side players are going to be probably deploying galadriel especially if they're playing elves because it's just a fan favorite but you never know it really galadriel can be used um, from any light side faction effectively. Um, I don't really think there's any one particular T4 that suits her best. Um, she does a lot of damage herself and inflicts madness and stuff like that. So when I use Gladriel, I just try to keep her with like horses so that she's a little beefier and you know the units are tougher to completely wipe so that she can go and do her thing. I might test her with other units you know i've never tested her with iron warriors before so um, i might do that this season we'll see how it goes but uh, at any rate gladiol puts out just a tremendous amount of focus damage anybody who plays the game um who knows gladiol knows that so ostensibly i could use gandalf as a gladiol counter uh, or at least if that situation arises i plan to test it this season so that's a little uh, recap on my my number one guy, which is Gandalf. Number two is going to be Dwalin here. I put a lot of burn damage on him, uh, mitigation on him. Um, but also I wanted to just talk through, you know, getting him the, the stun immunity. So uh, I, I th thoroughly plan on prioritizing, you know, trying to get this helmet maxed out as quickly as I can. Just because, um, yeah, he'll be viable against Witch Kings as well because he does tremendous commander damage with the stun immunity which kings won't be able to do much to him the first two rounds especially with all the the, the burn damage mitigation he's going to have between the chest piece the traits on the war rams and guardians if i'm using guardians but mostly war rams like i said in my previous video um and then also at some point it's possible i could get him up to level uh reputation 20 uh, in which case um, then you could at some point down the line factor in this negative 50% burn damage received um, trait on the R5 once that gets finished. I need eight more points to do that. So at level 50, this is what my, I plan for my Gimli to look like. Um, I could move the, the three points between musician 
and level-headed over to, to Warrior of the Lonely Mountain. So then I only really need five more points to bring that 50% burn damage into play. Um, this build that you're looking at now, plus eight points in Warrior of the Lonely Mountain, would be, uh, you know, kind of like my end game build that I'd like to get to. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where I would put five points if I got them to re uh, Reputation 25. Um, but I could also have Warrior of the Lonely Mountain maxed out um, just at Reputation 17. Um, if I took those points out of Musician and level-headed, but level-headed, um, you know, removes a debuff just automatically and recovers a little bit of HP. I'm not really so much concerned with healing on Dwalin. I'm not trying to heal with Dwalin. I see a lot of people trying to get some some sort of heal benefit from his healing, and I just, I don't care about that. <laughs> I'm all about the damage mitigation, you know what I mean? Like two points of Musician is going to buff my army's defense by 2%. Um, I prefer that um, over the heal, if anything. I just have this one point in here purely to remove the debuff. I don't care about healing. I don't care about putting focus on him either. And really, uh, for relief, you want him to be more of a focus build. I'm trying to pump out damage, so um, I go for a might build on him. So it doesn't make any sense for me to try to do any healing, in my humble opinion. Um, and then also this, of course, reduces physical damage received. It's very similar, kind of in a way, to um, Celeborn and Galadriel, those um, folks that have... Um, the barrier, the blinding barrier. I forget what the name of it is. Hold on, let me just just look at it real quick because I can. Uh, it is this magical barrier? It's kind of similar to that. Um, no, nah, actually, it's not. This is purely defense, and the other one's actually mitigating damage straight up. There's an ability somebody has that dam that mitigates damage straight up. I maybe I'm thinking of Caliborn. I think I'm thinking of something else here. So I'm doing a quick investigate. The wise. Yes, this is it. Damage received negative 2%. So Dwalin's R5 is kind of similar to that. Uh, but yeah, so Dwalin's going to do major, major um, commander damage for me. That was part of the reason why I put the Aragorn's axe on him. The That first four rounds, um, allied commander physical damage ignores 25% of target's defense. Stacked on top of the negative 50% defense debuff that war rams put on he is going to massacre the enemy negative 75 percent defense over the first four rounds is going to be um really strong so that's my dwalin and uh that's my gandalf update for you uh, for as for aragorn uh, also, you know, for him, because I like to use him as a scout and knowing that he, he, he could hit, encounter that Witch King or that Galadriel, that's why he's got the quilted armor as well. Um, kind of the same sacrifice as what I made on Gandalf, you know, losing a little bit of might, losing the defense, and losing burn damage. You know, I'm trading it off and I'll level this up as well. He's in a little bit better shape because of the full helm. So if I'm running against a Witch King or some other dark side enemy, the negative 60% burn uh, poison focus damage is, is really huge. And then, you know, I'll be running mostly knights on on him uh, with a sprinkle of rams. You know, that's what I, basically I was doing the end of last season. I was throwing like 2,900 knights and 600 war rams on him, 700 war rams on him or something like that um, to get that, that defense debuff and uh, just letting them just tank and soak all the damage and everything. And it worked out really, really well. We only had to fight dark side last season. But I think really it, it shouldn't make too much of a difference against light side, um, at least those commanders where they're doing high focus damage, um, or if I run into a Haldir that's doing poison damage, like this will help mitigate all of that quite a bit. So um, he'll still be a really effective scout for me. Uh, and then the, the the big change is the tongue, and I'm curious to see how often, with an 8.3% chance to inflict madness, how often he actually inflicts it. That should be really interesting. So I'm planning on testing and observing that quite a bit looking through battle logs and stuff uh commander four my boy gilgalad i have no updates on him um other than just to say you know in my previous video i said i wouldn't be really using him a whole lot early because i don't um, i can't unlock uh elves until you know last in in the line in terms of building progression and that remains true but i do plan on just throwing something on him early just to get a couple of tiles a couple of levels you know, I don't want him to fall behind too badly. You know, I, it's, if I had to draw out a plan, I would have Gandalf level 31st, 
and then Dwalin at the same time would be somewhere between 20 and 25. Uh, Aragorn would be somewhere between 15 and 20, kind of hovering behind. Um, and then I would, at that point in time, I would want Gilgalad to minimally be level 10 to 15, um, just to uh, have some sort of a base on those guys, you know, build a foundation. Um, and then when those guys are out of stamina, that's when I start using secondary, you know, the guys that are coming a little bit down the line, like my Aowen and my Haldir. Um, but then you also got to throw into the mix the fact that I'm also going to plan it on, on leveling Treebeard. So really, I'm just really trying to pump out War Rams as fast as I can, upgrade the building so I can get their conscription time down as fast as I can, because those are my guys I'm trying to do a lot of work. Um, Gandalf, as per usual, is going to is going to be running the usual build where I'm going to be putting about six or 700 cataphracts up front and the rest are going to basically be sharpshooters or some sort of a ranged damage unit so that he can benefit, they can benefit from his dagger and his accessory. Um, but Treebeard is also going to be using the War Rams quite heavily, so um, especially early. And so I'm going to really be making a ton of them and seeing what kind of damage they can do, seeing how much damage they can take. Um, I'm interested to see also how often this madness plays uh, any sort of a uh, impact in a battle. Um, it's the first time I'm using them, and then you also got to figure on him with this, he's going to be inflicting a negative 30% defense for the entirety of the battle, not just the four, first four rounds like uh, like Dwalin's axe, but this hammer is, is a little different. It's all throughout the whole battle. Stack that on top of the War Rams, negative 50%, so it's negative 80%. I mean, I'm not going to have War Rams you know, on day one, of course, um, but I will be working to get them uh, unlocked and leveled as quickly as possible, maybe within a week, two weeks, I would hope, idealistically, at, at most. Um, so we'll see how it goes, and I'll, of course, report in on all this as the season progresses as I'm able. All right, that's it. It was longer than the last one. I apologize, but uh, as you can tell, I have a lot of thoughts, and I appreciate you hanging in there and uh, watching these videos. And you know, feel free to let me know if you have any thoughts or feedback or other suggestions or. Maybe, you know, I don't see everything, I don't know everything, so I always value differing perspectives on anything that I'm over here talking about. Again, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Leave a like or a comment. Shoot me a message in Discord or in game. Take care of yourselves and stay well.